Crappie Hippie presents At the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie jigs and make your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Lead Free Lures. May all your fishing be lead free. Visit us at glasswaterleadfreelures.com. And now it's time to gain some know how with Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Good morning, Crappie Hippie here. It is cold and dark and damp out there today, and the ice is on the pond. It's too thick to launch the boat, but it's not thick enough to walk on, so I guess there's no fishing for me. I do want to stay involved with fishing somehow, so I'm going to sit down here and tie a few jigs. And you must be interested in jig tying too, or you wouldn't be here. So let me tell you what let's do. Let's go over the basic equipment you're going to need to set yourself up to tie jigs. And we're going to do this on a budget. We're going to try to bring it in right around $60. There's eight things that you're going to need to get a basic setup to tie jigs. Those things are a vise, a weighted dig head, body material, tail material, thread, bobbin to manage the thread, scissors, and finally some clear fingernail polish to give your build durability. We'll go over each of these items one by one in the following video. So let's get ready to get equipped to tie some jigs and be ready for spring. Okay, tying jigs. First thing you're going to need is a vise. Now, you can get a rotary vise, and that's a very lovely top-of-the-line piece of equipment. They run between $80 and $200. I've never had one. I have literally tied thousands of jigs, and I've done them all on a vise just like this one. All right. You can get this kind of a vise between $5 and $20. My wife got this one off eBay. I think she paid $15 and got two of these. So you see, I got them to mine pretty cheap. Um, so let's just say we're going to spend $10 on our vise. Say we find a nice price $10 vise. Now, some of them have a squared off jaw. I prefer the kind with the pointed jaw like this. Some of them have a tensioner, a jaw tightener back here that's like a little flip uh, arrangement. I prefer the kind with a knob like this. All right. But do not pay more than $20 for your vise. All righty. Next item. All right, next thing we're going to need is a weighted jig head. And I am a lead-free angler, so I use uh, iron to do my jig heads. This is a hematite bead. Uh, hematite is a type of iron, and we will do a video on how to make these. Um, as far as other types of jig heads, your standard jig heads, you can go to any larger tackle shop. Of course, you can order them online. They'll run you between 12 and 25 cents. If you want to be lead free, you can get what, what are called tin bismuth jig heads. And those are going to run you 25 to 30 some cents probably uh, because the base material is more costly. As far as sizes go, I know that all us crappie guys, we carry around some quarter ounce stuff. We carry around some 32nd and even some 64th ounce stuff. But the main two sizes crappie fishermen carry around are 8th ounce and 16th ounce jigs. So let's just say, oh, we're going to get a dozen of each. A dozen eighth ounce, a dozen sixteenth ounce, and let's say we spend $5 on the whole mess. Okay, so now we have a vise and we have our jig heads. Okay, body material. Now, 90% of the time when we're talking crappie jig, uh, body material is chenille. And chenille is... Uh, in its most basic form, a type of rayon yarn. Uh, it comes about five yards to a card. These cards come uh, between 250 and 350 in price. Sometimes it'll come in a just in a wad in a plastic bag like this. You still get the same five yards. This size right here that I'm working with is medium. You can get large. You can also get uh, finer or small, depending on the pattern that you're tying. Now, 90% of jig bodies are chenille, and that may sound uncomplicated, except there are dozens and dozens and dozens of types of chenille. There's chenille that's called crystal flash. There's chenille that's fluorescent. There's shaggy chenille. There's microfoam chenille. 
all kinds of things you can try but we're going to stay within our budget so we're going to stick with three colors we're going to use a standard medium rayon yarn chenille and the three colors that i like best number one if you can only afford one you want to get chartreuse because that is my crappie color number two i like black just because a lot of patterns uh go well with some black in them and if you're going to tie any dark jigs at all you're going to need some dark body color now this last color is going to cause some arguments a lot of guys would say white i say red i like to have red in my bodies um but white is another good color uh we, ideally we'd have both but we're on a budget we're going to stick with three if you don't like red get white but the colors i'm picking for my patterns are chartreuse black and red all right and now we've got our body colors figured out that's about ten dollars worth and we're ready to rock and roll on some tails okay let's talk about tail color now and we call it marabou a lot of us older guys then that definitely applies to me we called it marabou it came off the marabou stork which is a bird that's found halfway around the world they're on the endangered list and uh, there's really no reason to be harvesting feathers off that animal anymore so what we have done is breed turkeys to make these beautiful fluffy feathers and they work every bit as good as marabou did so we call it turkey boo or just boo and uh we're going to limit ourselves to three colors of turkey boo as well okay of course i'm going to do chartreuse right and uh i gotta have that and then i think white because white is probably the next most prominent color in crappie fishing and then you absolutely have to have a dark color because sometimes especially pond crappies will be feeding on crawfish or mad toms or tadpoles they'll be feeding on some dark little uh food source and you need some black also black gives you a good accent color with your other two colors um you know and once again we could we could get off into dozens of good crappie colors but we're going to hold ourselves to these three right here okay now marabou comes turkey boo comes in these quarter ounce packages it's called strung marabou or strung turkey boo and we'll do another video on how to uh, pick pick the feathers out of the string and how to get set up to tie a jig when we do some of our jig tying videos but these cost about 250 to 350 i get mine at the fly shop the fly tying shop uh you can get them at bass pro of course there's dozens of places online where you can find uh jig tying and fly tying supplies if you're not near a big city um and you can't get to the tackle shop very easily you can get pretty much anything you want online including this stuff okay so though we got our threat body material we got our tail material uh, and we've got our jig head and, and so on. So what we got to do is get this material tied to the hook. And that'll be our next segment. All right, we're going to tie all these, these tail and body material. We're going to tie them to the hook with a nylon thread. Um, what you want to do is match your thread to your body color so naturally i've got chartreuse red and black thread and um it's a basic six aught nylon thread uh there's lots of different types of thread the old nylon is is kind of an old-fashioned thread it's a good cheaper basic thread six aught strong enough for jig tying but not too big um you can get mono there's all kinds of different threads now guys are using but start out with this nice six aught nylon most of your threads are going to be made out of synthetic materials because they're more water resistant anyway these spools of thread cost between 250 and 350 so if i'm adding up correctly we've put ten dollars into our vice ten dollars into body material ten dollars into tail material and now ten dollars into thread and five dollars into our jig head so we're up to 45 dollars uh, putting our kit together but we still need to get a couple of items and thread management will be the topic of our next session okay one of the items i suggested you buy is a bobbin uh, there's a reason for that i have tried to tie jigs without a bobbin and you can do it but don't do it
I mean, seriously, it's not a very expensive piece of equipment. And it saves you a lot of headache and a lot of heartache. And who needs headaches and heartaches in their life unnecessarily? Okay, so I've got two perfectly lovely bobbins here. This one's a plain steel tube bobbin, this one right here. This one is a ceramic uh, bobbin. This one runs about 3 to $5. This one runs between 5 and $10. This is a good bobbin. This is an excellent, fantastic bobbin. What makes this one so much better is that this tube of, of steel, and then they put another tube of ceramic material down in there. And when you're pulling nylon across there, uh, the ceramic reduces the friction and keeps that material from heating up. And therefore, you, you get less breakage, less inexplicable snags and, and broken threads. Also, this one comes with this really nice weight on it. And that's a real nice bonus because sometimes we want that weight when we're just hanging the thread down here on a tie. And uh, so three to five here, five to ten here. I think I paid seven or five or something for this one. Also, if you can't wait for the mail order, you can't get to town. Uh, there's a great video channel called The Handcrafted Fisherman or The Handmade Fisherman. Anyway, it's by Paul Adams. He'll show you how to make a bobbin. So you can have a bobbin for every color thread that you own. And he'll show you how to make them inexpensively and easily. I put the link down below, but check out his uh, YouTube channel because it is absolutely amazing. The guy can make any kind of lure, basically any kind of anything that has to do with fishing. Okay, so we've got our bobbin now, and we're going to say we spent $5 on it. So now we're up to $50 in our budget. Okay, coming down to the last two items. We're going to do the last two items in this segment really quickly. Uh, my main point on the scissors is just get yourself a nice small pair of scissors, okay? They make really nice, it been somewhat pricey, uh, fly tying scissors with pointy jaws and very, very nice steel blades and so on. And that's great, and, and everybody should work for that because good equipment is good equipment, and great equipment is great equipment, but we're on a budget. So getting your school supplies, I swiped these off my wife's sewing table, and I think she replaced them because she hasn't come back to get them. Um, but you can probably find a decent, smaller size pair of scissors. All you're going to be cutting is thread and chenille and boo. And so we don't need to get too fancy. So let's just, whoa, let's just put in 250 for the scissors. Also, you know, uh, clear fingernail polish. If you have someone in your house that uses fingernail polish, go check out their uh, vanity area and maybe a little of the clear uh, disappears uh, and you get some for free. This is Sinful Color. It's one of the less pricey. It's actually my favorite, Sinful Color. Um, you can get this at Walmart. I mean, they sell this all over the place, right? Um, so you get yourself some clear fingernail polish. Let's say we paid $250 for this. So now we're up to $55 in our budget. And we have one more luxury item that we're going to spend the last of our budget money on coming up in the next segment. All right, we've added it up and uh, we've got $5 left. And that means we can bring in a little bit of a luxury item. And if I'm going to bring in one luxury item to my tying bench, it's going to be this stuff. It's called Flashaboo, and there is nothing like this for taking a standard feather pattern and putting some sparkle, putting some party in that pattern. I mean, seriously. Uh, we all know sometimes the fish don't want all that flash, but sometimes a little sparkle, a little flash is exactly what gets them turned on, exactly what makes them swim over and take a swipe at it. And this stuff goes in your crappie patterns, bass patterns, trout, panfish patterns, walleye patterns benefit from this extremely. Uh, because it gives you some light and it gives you some color in deeper water. Uh, anyway, it's great stuff. So get yourself a skein or a hank. A uh, flashaboo is going to cost us between 5 and $7. And uh, you can even make a straight up jig. We're going to do a video on a straight up jig called a skinny jig that we just use a few... Uh, pieces of, of flashaboo to make a, a really killer fish catching crappie jig. So this is our uh, luxury item and now we've filled out our budget around $60. All right, you can get yourself some flashaboo. It comes in tons and tons of colors, but of course my favorite color is chartreuse. Guess what I got? Chartreuse. 
All righty. Thank you very much. There's a ninth thing that everybody has to have if they're going to tie jig successfully, and that is a creative corner where they can leave their tying bench set up. So hopefully you have a supportive family, a supportive partner, a supportive environment where you can leave your stuff set up because you get an idea for a jig build. And if you have to drag all this out and set it all up by the time you get going, your inspiration's gone flat. Your idea has flown. You have to have a nice little creative corner uh, in which to do your um, creative and imaginative work uh, making these jigs that you think are going to catch you some fish come spring. Uh, in return for that corner, in return for that respect, I would suggest that you take care of the people that are taking care of you and clean up around your bench every now and then. I mean, when you can't tell what kind of floor material is down there because of all the chenille and feathers and thread scraps and so forth that have hit the floor, grab that vacuum and clean it up, all right, before it gets out the door. Uh, help each other out because putting up with a fisherman and putting up with his uh, jig tying uh, can be asking a lot sometimes. Don't make it too much. Alrighty, I hope you come back and see me and come back and see me real soon because I'm going to be putting up uh, videos on how to use this stuff and we'll work together and get your tackle box all filled up and ready for spring. Until then, may all your fishing be lead free. Peace be with you. Crappie hippie out.